Salwete, ladies. Um, we are going to do lesson 20 in your textbook today. That is um, third IO and fourth conjugation verbs. We're going to learn them in the tenses that you already know, which are present, future, and perfect tenses. Okay. But first, some information about the third IO and fourth conjugation verbs. Uh, third IO and fourth conjugation verbs follow practically an identical pattern to each other. Okay, um, there are only two times in which a third IO ending is going to be different from a fourth conjugation ending. All right, um, one of them we'll learn about today, one of them we'll learn about um, by the end of the year. Third IO and fourths follow a very similar pattern to third conjugation verbs, which you just learned, except that third, IO and, third IOs and fourth hold on to their E, their I's. Okay, so they always have the I in their ending, in the present, in the present system, okay? Um, third IO verbs have an ERE in their second principal part. That's how you know their third conjugation. But they're called IOs because their first principal part ends in IO, okay? Fourth conjugation verbs end um, in, their, in an IRE in their second principal part, okay? Um, to get the present stem, just like with the third conjugation, you remove the entire ERE or IRE from the second principal part, which means that their present stem does not have the vowel on it, okay? Just like third conjugation verbs. So you need to supply the vowel to show that you're either in the present or the future. Um, the vowels that you supply for the present is either I or IU in the third person plural. For the future, it's I-A in the first person plural, uh, singular, excuse me, in the first person singular, um, and I-E in all the other persons and numbers. So let's take a look at how to conjugate third I-O verbs. Okay, as always, first principal part is the first person singular present active indicative. After that, you need your present stem. Just like with the third conjugation, you're going to add the I and the personal endings. The only difference is that instead of just adding a U in the third person plural, you have to add an IU. Okay, so instead of a gunt, it's going to be copiunt, as you'll see in a couple of slides. The present active imperative, um, you have a present stem plus the E. That's just like a regular third conjugation verb. However, it is going to be different from a fourth conjugation ending um, in the singular imperative, as you'll see in a couple slides. The plural is the present stem plus ite. I just want to point one thing out to you. There are four, four irregular verbs that are going to form their um, singular imperative um, without that e ending. Uh, they're f they're going to be... Um, Duke, deke, fock, and fair. So the first one is a third IO, fockio, and its singular imperative is going to be fock instead of focka. I just want you to make note of it, okay? Um, and every time we meet, we see one of these irregular verbs, I will point it out to you. The present active infinitive, always, second principal part. Again, the future active indicative is going to look very similar to the third conjugation, okay, am, ace, et, amus, atus, ent, except for it's going to be eom, eace, eet, eamus, eatus, eent. Perfect active indicative, remember that the perfect system is completely regular for all verbs, which is why we love the perfect system. So perfect active indicative is exactly what you expect, perfect stem plus the perfect endings e, est, et, so let's take a look at how um, our paradigm verb, copio, copera, capi, coptum, um, conjugates. Now again, you can tell this is a third IO because it has the ERE, -E, no macron, ERE, -E, um, in its second principal part, and it ends in an IO in its first principal part. We get our present stem from taking the ERE -E off the second principal part, which means that our present stem is cop, okay? Um, copio, capis, capit, capimus, capitis, copiunt, right? Remember, you have to keep that I in there. Um, the singular imperative, cape, plural, capite, and our infinitive, capere, okay? Um, again, in the future, 
I'm Ace A at Amos Atis N. You're used to that. It's just now it's going to be copy um, copy Ace, copy at, copy Amos, copy Atis, copy M. Okay. And then the perfect indicative is exactly what you'd expect it to be. Third principal part, remove the I, put the endings on there. So KP, KPISTI, KPIT, KPIMUS, KPISTIS, KPIRUN. Okay. Um, fourth conjugation. It's going to look pretty much identical to the third IO. Um, in the present active indicative, the only difference are a couple of macrons, and they're not important macrons, so I'm not making you memorize them. Um, in the singular imperative, though, this is one of two ways in which third IO and fourth conjugations differ. Um, if you remember, the third IO has an E in the singular imperative. Um, fourth has a long I. There you go. Plural still I-T-E. And the present infinitive is still, present active infinitive, I should say, is still the second principal part. Um, and the future and the perfect are exactly the same. Yam, ye, si, yet. Ye, mis, ye, dis, yet. Just like the third IOs. Perfect stem plus E, S, D, it. And this is just a runt, exactly what you expect. So let's see how this conjugates with our paradigm verb, audio, audire, audiwi, auditum, which means to hear. You can tell that this is second, uh, excuse me, you can tell from its second principal part that this is fourth conjugation because it has the IRE, that's fourth. You take that off, we get our present stem, which is aud. So audio, audis, audit, audimus, auditus, audiant. Our present imperative, audi, um, plural, audita, um, and our infinitive, audire, okay? Um, the present, again, looking, uh, excuse me, the future, looking identical to the third IO, audiam, audiace, audiet, audiamus, audiatus, audient. Um, and then our uh, perfect active indicative, audiwi, audiwisti, audiwit, audiwimus, audiwistis, audiwayrunt. Um, so there you go. If you have these um, in your notes, I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Uh, and we will go over any questions you have. Have a good night, ladies.